Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. In the last part, we got ourselves a time machine. And now... Oh! Was that a reaction to the time machine? Yes. Ah, I was like, you are about to say something. And now we're back in and, uh, 1200 BC, uh, 12,000, which, by the way, is called Antiquity, so I'll probably refer to me referring to it as such from now on. And you might remember there was this Terra Cave earlier. Now we can actually enter this place because there's a ladder here for us. So welcome to Al Jetty. This is essentially where the normal humans of the world live. Uh, those who are born without the ability to use magic. And there's some good weapons here, actually. I want to buy a common arrow and a mega blast. Because uh, the, the rest of the weapons we can actually steal in an upcoming area. So, better to have it that. Magma <laughs> hand. Uh, mega blast. That's a, that's a pretty good weapon. That actually reminds me of something that has to do with wheat bread. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, ha, we got it. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. And Algeti is not a very interesting town, actually. Though there's a guy who uh, shares the exact same sprite as Duan from uh, 2300. Ah. And yet again, another song that reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy VI. In fact, I think this is the same song that reminds me of Final Fantasy VI. Up. And as that person said, the only people that treated the Earthbound ones here as normal people were Scala and the Three Gurus. Which, once you know it, the reason you want to come to the Terra Cave is, first off, I think there's actually a free inn here. The Mountain of Woe that Melchior is located on, we can only get by heading through this area. I also find it weird how it's literally a giant chunk of rock being held together by chains. In the sky. It's like Angel Island, basically. Oh, also, please tell me you charm these guys. Yes, I do. First enemy at the part is... The very Beast. originally named Beasts. 830 HP, 170 defense, 204 XP, 5 TP, 450 gold. Uh, you, can, you actually power them by physically attacking, but you can steal rainbow helms from them. Which is one of the best helmets in the game. I want to get a good amount of them from them. I want to say I, I get all one for everyone except for Chrono and Marl. Uh, Chrono because I'll have another thing to get soon, and Marl because she has the safe helm. Uh, I forget exactly how many fights against them there are in this place, but if you just leave through the bottom door... Only the two that I recall, so there's only four of them. Which is the perfect amount, but in case you need more, you can just go through the door in the bottom left and come back in. They should respawn. But what very odd designs. Also, I have my party set up as Chrono, Robo, and Ayla. Because uh, I'm going to need to use a certain dual tech of theirs in an upcoming boss fight. The Something I do kind of wish this game did that I know some other RPGs at this point had done was that at some point in the game, they switched up the ba battle theme, because while I love the main battle theme, hearing it throughout the entire game can get a bit repetitive. Maybe if they started adding a new battle theme around the time you entered Zeal. Would have been cool. But yeah, the reason I, I, the reason I didn't get one for Chrono is because I'm going to be getting another uh, helmet for him in the very near future. And Marl already has the safe helm. As for what the rainbow helms do, do you remember that off the top of your head? No. Oh, like what they, uh... Yeah, like the stats they give. Not, I don't know, remember the stats, but I know they cut lightning attacks. Yeah. Either way, we're immediately led into our first boss fight against three creatures. You start three off. Three creatures. Okay, so... I've got two of them, so I'll just announce them both. I've got a blue beast, which is the thing on the right, 5,000 HP, 150 defense, 300 XP, 8 tech points, 800 gil, uh, gil, gold. Weak to fire, immune to, uh, uh, water, you can charm a mermaid helm, which cuts water attacks by a third. And you also have the mud imps, which have 1,200 HP, 250 defense, uh, 80 magic defense, 354 XP, 6 tech points, 1,000 gold, you can charm a speed tab from it. And then finally, there's the Red Beast. 5,000 HP, 100, uh, uh, yeah, it's 150 defense. 300 XP, 8 TP, 800 gold, weak to aqua, immune to fire. You can charm an elixir. It's basically the exact opposite of the Blue Beast. 
And my main uh, bot, uh, strategy for this boss is to first off, start off with Chrono, uh, Chrono, uh, Robo and Ayla's dual tech boogie, because that will stop the beasts from actually being able to do anything for a bit. Then you want to chew uh, charm for the balloon and then just so you can get those two things. And then after that, you're gonna want to spam laser span and lightning too, just because they're the only one elements they're not immune to. And once Ayla's done her ceiling business, use Falcon Hit just because it does a lot of damage. And if you need to, reestablish boogie. What are your general strat uh, strategies, Ken? Uh, charm, first off. That's the most important thing to do. And then Falcon Hit plus, uh... Anything that's a multi multi party hit move, I usually try and do. So basically, any of the, any of the level two uh, magic. Yeah, any of the level two magics, uh, dual attacks. Uh, one of my favorite moves to use against the mud imp is uh, mud imp is called final kick. Uh, that's an Ayla dual tech, isn't it? That is correct. That's like Ayla, and I want to say frog. Marl. Marl. You can tell I don't know all the dual techs, because honestly, there are a lot of dual techs in the game, like, what, upwards of 30 or something? Yep. And <laughs> you, they're all fairly useful, all things considered, it's just the fact that I don't use some of them, because honestly, there are some party arrangements in this game that I find kind of rare to use. Like, I don't think I ever really use Ayla Marl, aside from the Black Toronto fight. The Mud Imp is the most annoying part of this fight, because he's the only one who can do consistent damage. But as long as you use Falcon Hand a good amount of times, this fight shouldn't be too bad. Is it ever possible to actually kill the Mud Imp? I've never really been able to do that. Uh, let's see. How much HP did he have? Uh, 12... 1200? 1200? Yeah, it's generally possible. You might want to, might have to focus on him first, because he has the ability to run away, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Uh, if you're good enough at using Falcon and, sh and such, it should be able to do. Uh, most of the time he does run away, like I think he does for he me here. But if you are constantly attacking him, he probably will die. Sometimes I like to go after the Mud Imp first. The Mud Imp can also heal himself, which is the big issue with him. Uh, physical attacks are the way to go about him, though, because he has lower defense than any of the uh, beasts. After they're killed. Yeah. Oh, that's right, his defense lowers. My bad. Forgot to write that down. But yeah, this boss fight, especially once you get down to the Mud Imp, there's not much of a thing he can do against you because your physical attacks do more than enough towards him. Especially if you get critical hits and do about a third of his HP. Though weirdly enough, the Mud Imp is very hardy at the same time because I think he heals after every physical strike, doesn't he? That is correct. So that means you need to be constantly be doing more than roughly about 100 to 150 damage each turn. Cool thing is that uh, spin cuts like a critical hit. Yeah, critical. I think it's almost a guaranteed critical hit. And there he goes. It always does times two damage. Oh, I thought that was actually just a mistranslation of the thing. Either way, this chain here is our way up to the mountain of woe. Cause seriously, how is this possible? I understand mad. Actually, it's probably how magic. But first off in this area, I hate these things. We have the rubbles. 515 HP, 140 defense, 100 magic defense, 1,000 XP, 100. TP. They're immune to everything that's not a physical attack, and that lock-all thing actually prevents you from using any techs anyway. You can charm mid-others from them, and they can also drop mid-others. The big thing with these guys, though, is that you want to physically attack them. They have very high evasion, so you're not guaranteed to hit them all the time, but you want to because that 100 tech points is oh so sexy. Uh, if you're playing long, I actually recommend switching your party members every couple of battles just so everyone can get some good uh, fairness around here. Either way, go ahead. Bantam imps hate these things. So, 250 HP, 222 XP, 6 tech points, 550 gold, and you can charm an alloy blade from them, which is Chrono's next blade up. Yeah, I, I, if I recall, it's actually stronger than you can... Uh, is, is it stronger than the blade you can get from the choice between that and the safe helm? Ooh, no. I think it's slightly strong. I think the other one's slightly stronger. What's the other one even called? I don't think I've actually ever gotten it. I just know swallow. it gets swallow. Gross. But yeah, the, the, a lot of the enemies in this area are the ones I was mentioning earlier that have the weapons that you could have bought in the Alge in the Algeti store. So it's just better to steal from here. Yeah, I actually didn't know about this until quite recently. Also, they're called stone imps when they don't have the bird out. Yeah, which is weird. 
I wonder if that means you can charm different things from them. Uh, no, because I think there's, because look, the enemies at the bottom left are still considered that. And we got confused for Chrono. That's one of his better techs. Uh, as I think Kenny mentioned it earlier during like the Megas fight or something. Uh, it's basically four fairly powerful attacks in a row. You didn't fight that thing. Because I wanted to get the treasure first. Load Helm. That's actually not as good as the Rainbow Helms. Actually, I know why I didn't fight him. I missed him the first time because I didn't see him. Uh, the, the Rubbles are actually surprisingly good at blending in thanks to the little visual filter over the screen. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Although this area has one of my least favorite things that both in Final Fantasy VI did. No actual music, just atmospheric wind. Which, cool from a design standpoint, isn't as memorable. What? Wow, what place did that in FF6? Uh, it's mostly in cutscenes, actually, now that I'm thinking back. Uh, next enemy, either way, is a gargoyle. 260 HE, 100 defense, 216 XP, 6 TP. And you can charm a big hand for it, which is the next weapon for Robo. Pet. Big hand. Know what they say about guys with big hands? They punch really freaking hard. And there I got the triple check, uh, triple tech twister, which is the reason I was actually fighting with this party for a bit there as well, besides just the blue red beast boss fight. So I believe at some point I'll actually be switching out Ayla, unless I'm trying to get her some of the next tech. And this save point is very important, actually. Uh, if Why? You, if you save there, you can technically fight an infinite amount of rubbles. This guy will constantly respawn as long as you. Uh, fight, go back, save, and then restart the game. And I didn't know that. I, 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 I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit wrong at the wording there, but you can fight that guy infinitely if you know the right method, which is the best way to get tech points in the game. I didn't do it because I didn't think that would be a bit fair towards the game itself. Who, who cares about being fair to the game? It's about beating it. Yeah, on the on the uh, goal point, you are right, but for story purposes, it makes sense to be more so as we're growing instead of just being an overpowered god through most of it. That's fair. That's what New Game Plus is for. Well, I mean, what about Final Fantasy VI and just before Kefka? Uh, Ultima, you can get naturally, so without grinding, so not much issue there. Well, mind but, you. But 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 Paladin Shield. Yeah, that's how I usually get it. It's the only thing I ever grind for in six. And even then, I do it on the uh, dinosaur, not the dinosaur island. Uh, the island you start off in the world of ruin. Because those mice die on their own anyway. <laughs> That's weird. Well, it's because the world's just so dead at that point. Either way, next new enemy, go ahead, Ken. Once Man they, eaters. Once I they think. actually go into the fight. Thank you, that was weird. 250 HP, 65 minutes of defense, 253 experience points, 6 tech points, 750 gold. You can charm a pearl edge. Which is Frog's next weapon, and they cause confusion. Wonderful. They, uh, the confusions, this is one of the few areas in the game where confusion's actually a fairly consistent hitter for me. Because these guys are pretty accurate with it. Uh, yeah, it gets me too. If you have any fire attacks, I believe it is still fairly effective against them. Also effective is just laser spin. Overall, though, not too bad of an enemy type. I actually really like the color scheme. That, that green really pops against that blue. Or rather, vice versa. Falcon, it can also hit at least two of them at a time if you're good enough, so that's pretty useful. That's one thing I actually do like about Corona Trigger is because the random battles are actually all in set locations, that means you can potentially have a strategy for each particular fight to do it as quickly as possible. In fact, that's what speedruns do. I'll never forget that AGDQ Chrono Trigger run. Ah, that was glorious. Hit one million as soon as they beat the final boss. What? Oh. Million dollars raised for Prevent Cancer Foundation. It was glorious. And as you can see, now you're seeing the real pain about chaos. If two of your characters are chaos, they're either attacking each other or they're missing everything. Also, that is a really strange frame for F Robo right there. <coughs> oh my god. It is very... It's Isn't it kind of creepy, though? Yeah. It, it looks like he has a mouth, but actually, if you look at the concept art for Robo, he actually has a lot of, underneath his armor, black rubber-like sections that he can move around as, like, joints and such.
I don't know why. Oh, that's why. Uh, the reason I gave him the Rage Band is because I took the Masamune off of him. The Hero Metal is no longer effective. It won't give any other weapon a boost to critical rate. So it's just more useful to have something else on him. I use Rage Band just because having that extra chance of damage. Useful. Rage. That was such a weird game. Remember that? That was, like, early high school for me, so probably late middle school for you. Yeah. I remember the wave. I remember the Wolfenstein uh, Easter egg very much, actually. That was really cool. And I recommend using this save point, actually, because we're actually at the end of the Mountain of Woe. Up here is the boss fight. And if I recalled correctly, which I did not. That is That was always a bit odd to me. This game does that on at least a few occasions. The save point isn't right before the boss. <coughs> it's usually a room before the boss. Which is just... Also, that magic tab is very, very hard to see. Yeah, I, I think it's actually off the screen. But either way, good to get that. Now we're right before the boss fight, and I'm bringing in this party just because of things. And because of the main strategy I usually use for this fight. Also, I love that effect of the water getting thing in Ozzy? That is Ozzy's ice sprite. Why is it here? Apparently, the Melchior's around here somehow. What just... How? Well, it's time for the next major boss fight, ladies and gentlemen. I believe we've been featured in the starting of the game again. Time for Giga Gaia. Giga Gaia has 9,500 HP, 3,000 experience points, 30 TP, 3,000 gold. You can charm a speed castle from it, so a uh, speed tab, rather, so get that when you can. And the big thing about this fight is that the big trick to it is surviving the first few rounds because those hands do a lot of damage. Uh, the attack arm will usually have your HP. The defense arm will heal the other parts. And the thing we need to attack is the head. Uh, the head also regenerates the arms eventually. Start off with Twister. You, you take out the hands instantly. You can charm the hands, can't you? I don't believe so. They don't, I don't think they have separate enemy data. At this point, just go all out with individual techs. Uh, confuse. I, I'm sure you can charm the head, though. Yeah, I, I, that's what you get the speed tap from. Uh, single techs I recommend using for this fight. Confuse, Uzi Punch, Cat Attack, as long as you use that. Uh, he shouldn't be able to regenerate the hands, even. That that speed tab, by the way, that you get from him, I'm giving to Luca. Uh, what's your general strategy for this guy, Ken? Usually start out with Twister and then just destroy the head. Yeah. Although by this point I'll have a lot of the ultimate abilities, so... You know, like spamming like uh, Luminaire and such? Pretty much. <laughs> I'm a, a terrible person. That's a valid strategy. Uh. There's nothing wrong about it. <laughs> it's just the fact that's a bit mean to the guy. The one thing I always found odd about this boss fight, I don't remember if it happens on the cartridge. Uh, when you damage the head, uh, the hitbox vibrates very visibly, like with uh, Chronos Confuse here. And nothing else does. And I can't tell why. I, I think the face is easily a separate sprite, just because it animates. But it's weird. Mind you, this guy in general is weird. He looks like something out of, like, the tick. <laughs> I love his face. And also, his goes. face just popped off. Yeah. Ah, uh, you gotta love sprite limitations. But Giga Guy, not a very hard boss fight. It's actually pretty easy, despite his size. Just get rid of the hands as soon as you can. You should be fine. Is the ice gonna come back? I'm taking that sound effect as a yes. Oh. Broke. Cool. Something broke. And holy music. Really? We got also, some never melt ice. How did you do that? <laughs> I have my ways. And? Tell me, please. It is Melchior. It looks almost exactly like him. I guess strong genes. And he's doing his usual advising for us. He wants us to go stop the queen, stole the energy from Lavos, blah, 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 save the world. But first, for some reason, I guess because he was freed, or because we killed Giga Gaia, the Mountain of Woe is crashing. Which I never understood why. Though this does end up actually creating a mountain. 
I believe. It does? Uh, yeah, because look at where it's crashing down. If I recall, uh, this is what becomes Denadaro Mountain, or the Magic Mountain. One of the two. Based off location, probably the Magic Mountain. Never thought about it that way. At least that's what I would assume. Either way, as he's saying, we have to destroy the Mammon Machine quickly, because if it's brought too close to Lavos, he, he might end up awakening way earlier than he probably should. And him awakening either way is a bad idea, but uh, we need to stop it. But Scala's here, apparently. Hi. How'd you sneak away from the guards? Why did you bring the kid with you? I always found this scene kind of odd, because it almost seems... How do I word this? That... Hmm. Melchior was partially unaware that the queen had been corrupted to some extent. I guess. I don't know how to word it. But the scene always seemed a bit off to me. But she kept the skyway open for us so we can get up back up north, and that's a person that's not on the screen. Oh, damn it. Why are you here? How did you get here? Oh, actually, no. Getting here is not too hard from zeal. But how did you know we, we were here? And how did that not kill Melchior? Now, my issue is... Why wasn't I? Why wasn't he told to bring back Yanis as well? Because I know the reason why he's taking Scala. That much is obvious. But leaving Yanis there seems a bit odd. Either way, I guess we're kind of out of ideas right now. So let's talk to Melchior. Are you okay, dude? Did that guy bloated up your knees? Ooh. At this point, I have to admit, the uh, the plot gets a tad more generic because it just becomes X is evil, stop them. Even with the overall looming threat of Lavos. Honestly, I don't think the audience would care at this point. They're it, so sucked in already. Yeah. The backstory is more interesting, but the villain, not so much. But we get the ruby knife, which he tells us we can destroy the mammon machine. So, we'll need to use that eventually. But first, it's Speccio time again. This time with the same party. Speccio. Basic uh, fourth stage, 4,800 HP, 253 defense, uh, for some reason, even though all your attacks miss, and uses tier 2 magic. Basic strategy for this is all more or less the same. Chrono should be spamming lightning to Marl on Rub on healing. However, this time around, since you actually have haste, I recommend using that on the characters just so you can get a bit more damage in. And if Robo doesn't have any healing to do, just have him use laser spin to do a bit of extra damage. Uh, I'm probably attempting this a bit earlier than I should, uh, I, but I forget what my levels are at this point. Because it, it, this comes into one of my big issues with the Specchio fights, is that a lot of them are basically short-lived, short yes, and also just HP sponges. It, 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 there, there could be more strategy they could do here that would have just made it more interesting, but it's not. I do like the purple Omicron, the, though. Uh, that's pretty cool looking. Or is that red? I've always thought more pinkish. The big issue with this sex, uh, version of uh, Specchio and uh, pretty much every version from here on out is that since he does use Tier 2 magic, he can hit everyone at once, so you're going to need to really keep an eye on your healing. Also, this song sounds really wacky sped up. I don't think I even realized that when I was editing this. But, Weird. enough trial and error and just time, and he should go down eventually. And for beating him, as usual, we get a healthy choice set. One magic tab and five full others. Now, for being the master of war, Specchio, you're losing an awful lot. And now we're back in Kajar. That was a jump cut. <laughs> the main reason I'm here is to show that if you say no to that being Scala's pendant, the new actually changes his inventory. Now he has a lot of the weapons you could have gotten back in the place. Also, I've, I've completely forgot to mention, uh, back in the 
Uh, Mountain of Woe. I got a load vest. I gave that to Ayla. Alright, let's check out what we can do here again. Hopefully more than we did last time. <laughs> oh my god. You, you alright, dude? <coughs> oh my god, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, it'll be over. This will probably be the last day I'm affected. I just have the coughing. And Dalton is here waiting for us for some reason. He's very angry that the Prophet got permission to go and not him. Your so history! He's actually going to fight us. Dalton has 3,500 HP, 1,000 magic defense. Uh, no. 1,000. Uh, 100 magic defense. Some amount of magic defense. Probably perfect magic defense, actually. 1,000 experience points, 30 TP, 2,500 G. You can draw charm some ambrosias from him, which randomly heals HP, MP, or both. And his main attack that he uses is the same thing that the golems use, which halves your HP. Main strategies for this... Beast Toss. Yeah, Beast Toss, like, two shots him. Uh, along with Confuse. It's, it's very easy. That's how I deal with him. Uh, if you have Luminaire, I recommend... Uh, another possible strategy would be to bring in Luca and Marl and just spam uh, Antipode. Antipode 3! Uh, 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 yeah, whatever Antipode level you have, at the, that's the highest. Also, Preferably it two. missed. Uh, Confuse actually... Uh, Confuse doesn't overall miss. What happens is that each hit has a chance of missing. But yeah, Beast Toss is absurd in this fight because it does like a half of his HP. Just make sure you have more than 100 HP before the fight ends because he still does that burp attack. What you gonna do now, Dalton? Oh, you're gonna run like a little bitch, huh? Yeah, you get, out of get here. wherever that gate is taking you. But still, using this gate, ladies and gentlemen, teleports us to our next goal, where everyone else in the world is right now, really. Welcome to the Ocean Palace. But with that, we're gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 12, we'll be raiding the Ocean Palace and seeing if we can stop Zeal from her from succeeding in her plans. See you guys. See you guys. Then.